This is six time IFBB Bikini Pro Champion, Brina Martinez, and I take ZMA5 to make sure that I get the zinc, magnesium, and vitamin B6 needed to keep my immune system healthy and snack strong. The fight that is happening uh, the week after is going to showcase two fighters in their primes, uh, but one returning from a, a car accident that there's a lot of uh, questions surrounding how easy he's going to be coming into this fight. Uh, boom, boom. What do you make of this Errol Spence versus Danny Garcia fight? Break it down for me. Well, first of all, it, you know, it, when, if Errol didn't get in an accident and Errol's fight regularly like he was, and that's still a real fight. I mean, it's a terrific fight. See, Danny's a dog in this fight, and rightfully so, but he's a live dog. I like Danny Garcia a lot. I want, you know, just getting to know him a little bit, but he's slick, man. He counters, can punch with that left hook, terrific right hand. He's slicker than you think. You know, he, moves, he draws you, he sets traps for you, he draws you into these traps, he counters you. You know, that left hook he has is the punch you use against the southpaw. That's the punch, not the right hand, it's the southpaw. It's the left hook, comes from the blind side. And Danny's got a sneaky left hook. And Errol, yeah, Errol gets careless and trying to you know, overrush and try to, you know, think he's going to walk through Danny. Get, he's going to walk into something. So, but I admire Errol for not having a fight coming off of such a bad accident when, you know, nobody knew what the hell was going to happen to him. He's taken one of the toughest guys in the division, one of the top five. And, um, you know, without any tune-up fights, I admire that. I admire it very much. We don't know. He gets hit with a good left hook on the chin. What's going to happen? We don't know. Well, how's his brain going to react? We don't know. Um, so I'm really looking forward to this fight. I think it's a, it's, it's a, it's, it's a, Danny's a, a dog in this fight, but he's a live dog. And if he somehow beat Errol, I would not be surprised. Um, I, I think the only way he beats him is actually stops him. And that would be, Dan, Errol would have to walk into something. Mm. Danny sets up for him. Uh, if he goes to the season, Dan, Errol just throws too many punches. He's too, too high volume, too much of a high volume puncher for Danny. And I, I think he's too strong for Danny because Errol's basically a 54, 60 pounder. We know that. He's fighting 47, but he's bigger and stronger than that. And I think, it'll be, I think he'll push Danny around if he keep coming forward. If Danny a lot, you know, Danny will try to hold his ground, but I think Errol's too strong. So that's what I said, Danny has to set traps for him. Um, I would say before, Errol would have been a big favorite. And, I thought he would win because I thought, he was, I, th I thought he was the best pound for pound in the game before his accident. Um, but I, I, I still think, I still think, uh, you know, I just think he didn't pick Danny by chance. You know, he picked him because he's very confident and he picked the real guy. So I, I'm picking Danny uh, Arrow to win. Uh, I'm going to say my knockout. I don't say that or stop it, but I think by decision. In, uh, very close decision, but it could be a close unanimous decision. You know what I mean? It'd be unanimous, but it'd be close. The rounds would be closer than you know than you think. Um, but I think Errol wins the fight comes out victorious, and then maybe sets up the big one between him and him and Crawford. Who knows? Yeah, no, we we hope uh, at some point we get that Crawford fight. But quickly back on on, on this, um, boom boom. If you were advising Danny to, uh, as a like a, an approach to a fight, a game plan to a fight, what would you tell him to do in there? Like, how how would you game plan this fight for him to win? Well, Danny, you know, I, I, Danny goes out and he, he holds center ring pretty good. He does a good job of that. I say go out to do the same thing, establish center ring. Errol's going to come forward, and Errol's going to push him back. Keep Danny, keep moving to his left. Danny's slick. He spins, you know, spins out either way, left, right. Keep, drop that left hook up to the ribs. Drop that left hook to the shoulder. So when you fight a southpaw, you don't jab a southpaw try to hit him in the chin. You try to jab in the shoulder, knock him off. You know, you know, because the southpaw will faint, and you know most guys throw that right hand, that long right hand. But mm -hmm. does travels when you know when you throw right hand, you expose yourself. Now it's got to travel twice as far, and then all the southpaw does, he leans back, and he kind of falls your right back with a counter. That's why them guys are so effective. It's what got like Pacquiao's been through his years. He faints, he faints, he gets got an encounters, you know, so quick. Errol, I just think keep that jab on Danny, keep it, and, and but for Danny. He's got to negate that jab but with his own jab. But again, step to the right, add to the left. Keep stepping to the left and jab to the shoulder. Try to knock him off. You get in the position, you get close enough side, keep banging that left hook to the side of the ribs and the right hand over the top. And once you get close enough, 
you double up that left hook to the body, then to the head. This comes from, you know, like I said, the left hook is the most effective punch against the southpaw because mm -hmm. it comes from the blind side. Everyone thinks the right hand. No. They're expecting that. Plus, you got to travel twice as far. It's the left hook. Get inside, and it comes from the blind side. So, um, and then he's got a good one, quick. Um, I, I, you know, I, I think Danny, um, he takes a good punch. Um, Errol, you know, he covers up, you know, he knows how to move. Errol starts, you know, tapping him a little bit, keep your hands up tight, and kind of right back, short punches, right back. You know, kind of, you know, Mikey Garcia, even though he got beat, and got beat decisively, he kind of set the, the, the blueprint for that. Because when he got close enough, he let his hands go. He was catching Errol. He just wasn't doing it enough or as often as he should have because Errol negated a lot of that after a while. You know what I mean? But I think Danny, um, Dan, that's what Danny has to take that blueprint in there and just add it on to it. Keep throwing punches. Keep your hands up high. You know, move around them. Don't move back so much. You move back against Errol, and then, you know, you can forget it. You got no shot. No shot. If you're at the end of his punches, you got no shot. You got to stay inside. Keep Keep your hands up tight or come get close to that body. Sean showed that, you know, in fact, he's still a lot of good effect on body work against Errol. Uh, so it can be done. It can get close enough. And uh, I think Danny's a little slicker than Sean. And um, so we'll see. Not as strong. Not as strong as Sean, but slick. So mm. Thank you so much for watching this video. And make sure to subscribe for more videos of your favorite fighters over here on Fight Up TV. And give us a follow online as well at Fight Up TV, on Twitter, and on Instagram. We appreciate it, guys.